What's going on Spear Gang? It's your boy Captain Jack. Welcome back to the adventures. Now we had such a good time on the last time we went out on the ski so we're gonna send it again. Same crew, got Scotty Boy and myself. It is freaking freezing. High 50s, low 60s. I actually turned around because there was a little bit of wind and we didn't like that so I turned to head home and sure enough I ended up coming back. Uh, there was just something pulling me towards the ocean and I gotta get in there. So now that the temperature dropped a little bit some of those fish from up north start to come down to where we're at. Now we're hoping for some pelagics as always but honestly we'll take what we can get real quick wanted to mention that new merch is dropping this is my old stuff but i have a whole new line go check it out captainjackmerch.com pick yourself something up get it in time for the holidays but we're gonna send it and i'm so excited i get to take you with us so i will see you guys out there in the blue Woo, so it's blowing we're gonna earn it today it is cold So now we get in the water and we only have a couple of hours to dive. You can see that wind is absolutely pumping and I know that some people wanted to kind of see how I rig up the jet ski and that's what I'm doing right now. I get about a 20 foot float line, hook it onto the front of the jet ski and the other side of the float line is hooked onto our flashers. Now on a day like this, that's not ideal because the wind is pumping against the jet ski and the current's going the opposite way so it makes it a little bit difficult to dive but we were able to manage we're a little seasoned so we kind of know what we're doing now the gun that i'm rocking is again that blue tech bastard that thing is a beast and you'll see it again on this trip i will swear by this gun i've been so stoked since i've been shooting it i have yet to really miss a fish with it uh, unless it was like a half-hearted shot but uh but you see us we're getting the flashers ready we got some chummies and we're ready to get after it now right away bull sharks came in that's not really ideal uh so we kind of moved spots went a little bit more shallow uh and then at this point on we didn't see any sharks and you'll see me on this drop we have some chum kind of going down to the bottom and i saw a little bit of structure down in the sand and i go ahead and make a drop and now i normally would go straight to the bottom but on this kind of diving, I just descend like I'm a piece of chum. And that's what I do on this dive. I see some fish off in the distance and I'm not showing any aggression. I'm just kind of acting like I belong there. I'm part of the environment and I look as least threatening as possible. So now I go ahead and drop all the way. I don't really see anything worth shooting at this point. Uh, I see those fish off in the distance and you can see them actually coming into me. And I actually like it when this happens because it, it makes other predator fish that I'm really after feel comfortable. And that's what happens on this dive. Those fish come into me from that side and I turn around and there's a school of decent sized rainbow runners. Now I took the shot and that's kind of a small fish, a uh, decent little distance. And I absolutely laced him with that blue tech. Now I go ahead, clean him, gut him, toss him in the cooler. And if you guys want one of these blue techs, I'm telling you, link will be in the description below. You can get 10% off your order if you head to uh, if you head to spearfishingexperts.com. So now on this dive, you just kind of get to watch me hunt. I really don't get anything, but you see the chum falling, and you'll see me just kind of cruising down to the bottom. And I always do the grunting because I realistically, last time we were in this area. We shot an African pompano, so that's kind of what I'm banking on on this trip. So I'm always grunting. I'm always trying to act like a fish in distress, uh, but I act like I'm not a predator. So I go down all the way to the bottom, and I just kind of start cruising around. I see some bait fish off in the distance, and I actually kind of th thought I saw a mutton ahead of me, but it ended up just being a chub. But it was kind of on its own, and it was acting like a mutton, so from the distance, I wasn't really sure. But you can see me kind of toss some sand up. I'm just chilling down there, just kind of creeping along the bottom. And the current's moving, so I kind of just let the current, you know, have its way with me, just kind of pushing me along the bottom, act like I'm just a fish scouring around the bottom, and hopefully that another predator fish will think there's a free meal. Uh, but nothing actually happens on this dive. But you can see just how calm I am, just kind of cruising along, kicking up sand here and there, almost acting like it's as if I was a big stingray just searching for food. And uh, But nothing really hits at this dive. And um, But I, I head to the surface, but this next dive is a really good one. So now, 
I see a bunch of bait fish and there's some yellowtail kind of cruising the midwater column eating the chum and whenever that happens I really like that and I think it's a good sign to start diving that means there's a lot of commotion there's action in the water and trust me these bigger fish see these little bait fish from a long ways away so whenever that happens they kind of get enticed and they start moving in um, and not really a pelagic fish doesn't come in on these fish like I was hoping but I was kind of sizing up that yellowtail snapper. I was like, oh, is he big? But my experience with yellowtail, they're really tough to land a shot. They get very spooked. And so I just cruise down to the bottom. There's a big barracuda. And then I, right there, you can see me turn my body. I spot a school of mangrove snapper coming into me. And these are good sized mangroves. So I don't look very threaten, threatening. And they come cruising in. And I just take my time, pick out the bi best one, biggest one, and land a perfect shot. You can see that was right where I was aiming, right through the face, right through the gill plate. Perfect shot. Another fish in the box, and I was pretty stoked on this. So now this next drop is incredible. Um, a huge African pompano just came darting into the flashers. So now I make the drop. You can see the AP off in the corner. And what happens on this dive is I make a drop to get down there as soon as I can. And that kind of spooked the fish. And he was a little darty. And I was pursuing him. And I saw him moving away. So I stopped pursuing him completely. Just started descending and started grunting hard. And sure enough, he just turned around and booked it right into me. And now that was like a 15-foot shot, maybe closer to 20. It doesn't look like it, but that was a big fish. And I just let him run. You can hear my my Aussie reel just peel in line. And uh, I'm just slowly making my way to the surface, not putting too much pressure on the fish because I do not want to lose this fish, especially if we have another backup diver. We're going to land this fish. Okay. So I go ahead and tell Scott what I got on the line, and now I'm just babying this thing. I, I wasn't positive on the shot. I know I got a good shot on him placement-wise, but I wasn't sure on the penetration because it was such a far shot. So now I'm just kind of babying him. And with this situation, if you're not on a wreck, if you're just on some debris, if you're on the reef, you don't really have to worry too much about giving these pelagic fish some slack. I mean, unless there's some big sharks around, that's whenever you want to kind of worry a little bit. But on this one, I just gave him some slack, and that spear in him is enough to kind of wear him down. Because also, mind you, you're, you just got hit with something hard through the body, and it's weighing you down when you swim. So it put a lot of pressure on him, just the shaft alone, and now I start kind of pulling him up now that I know he's kind of giving me the death circles. But on this dive, Scott goes and puts a backup shot, and for some reason, I'll explain this in a minute, his line just busted a crimp and just took off so he lost his shaft somehow huh? I don't have my shaft. but luckily he made a good enough shot to where that fish was basically dead and i looked at his th thing and i was like that's weird because it, it's not like he forgot to hook on his spear it just snapped the swivel or snapped the crimp and he just lost his spear you can see him dive kind of seeing if he can see it but that thing is long gone um but now I know we don't have an extra shaft, we don't have an extra gun, so now I have to make sure I land this fish with what we have in him now. So I just baby him. If he was gonna pull, I'd just let him go and just give him the slack, but I just grabbed his tail immediately, and he tries to fight. You can see my whole body shake, but we got this fish. Scott has the knife, and he brains him, and we are so pumped on this fish. This is a good, good size African pompano. Yeah, dude, look at that. There we go. That's a big one. Hell yeah. Look at that. Dude, all about it. He came in. He actually darted away. They came back kind of to my grunting. And oh my god, that was that was unreal. That was a big fish. It's a good one. He was peeling, peeling line. Hell yeah. Such good inning. I'm so stoked. Dude, again with the ski. Two for two. Two for two, dude. Let's keep it rolling. <laughs> oh my god, you guys, that was 
epic. I cannot believe it. Two for two on the ski. We had to absolutely rush in. Uh, Scotty boy had to take some photos with his fiance. So they had a photo shoot. So I ran him into the beach and now I'm just chilling out here. That was insane, bro. Oh my God. Freaking doing it again. On the ski, unreal. This is insane. I never thought this would happen. And it did, and it's great. Hope you guys appreciate all the work I put into these videos. Cause here's a little behind the scenes action. If you hear that, you know what it is. Hot doggy. Good boy. So stoked, man. What a day. What a day. Yeah. All right, so we're back at the ramp. Gonna go through the loot. We'll see how the filet is when they're nice and warm. We didn't gut him either, so you know he's gonna be pretty toasty inside. I'm trying to cool him down as much as I can, but we'll see what happens. It's not really gonna do much, because the inside is what I'm worried about. I'm gonna sharpen my knife. Get to fillet in. One thing a guy actually came up to me and was asking me um, if this is like a regular Florida pompano, and truth be told, this is an African pompano, and I mean, there are pompano in Florida, but they are way smaller than this. These ones get, you know, they, these are, they can be small, but they mature and get way bigger than regular pompano. And these ones don't really hang out in the sand on the beaches like pompano do. These actually kind of hang off more offshore, deeper wrecks, deeper reef. Um, you can find them anywhere though, all up around the coast. But yeah, that's kind of a good thing that that guy came up and asked me that because I'm sure some of you at home are wondering. and. It's uh, you know, not a bad thing to drop some knowledge on you guys, if you didn't already know. And these are like one of my favorite fish to eat. I mean, I, you can eat them raw, you can eat them sauteed, you can grill them. I mean, they are freaking awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make sure I pay close attention. Don't wanna waste any meat and I will see you guys back at the house. Hey everyone, we're back in my house. Unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to do a catch and cook with that AP. I've just been way too slammed with work. I've just been super busy. But if you guys really enjoy the catch and cooks, please let me know in the comments below. And I am so excited I was able to take you on this adventure. Again, off the jet ski, two for two. Man, that thing is a slain machine. I also cannot believe that I literally was about to turn around. I'm so happy that I just went with my gut I went and sent it. Even though conditions weren't the most perfect, I'm still so happy that I sent it. Landed an amazing fish, had a good time, and I'm just so excited to get back out on the jet ski again. So you guys, if you enjoyed this episode, if you love what I do, please, please support, comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. It's free for you, and it helps me out. It's motivating, and I really enjoy bringing you guys content, sharing things, sharing experiences, and also making you guys better divers out there. If you enjoyed this episode, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. If you're new, subscribe, and I will see you guys next week for another adventure. Later.